Yeah. Crazy Day, Orlando Bloom. It's like the perfect name, it is too, the isn't perfect it? name. Orlando yes. Bloom. <laughs> is known for playing ultimate fantasy roles like Johnny Depp's smoldering ally in the Pirates of the Caribbean, who tried to win Keira Knightley's oh, heart. But no. And as the blonde hair, blue eyed elf prince with cat like moves. My gosh, Ooh, who wrote yes. this? Yes. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> well, now Orlando is making his moves. Broadway <laughs> debut in the timeless classic. Romeo and Juliet, and we bet you can guess who he's playing. Mercutio! Okay. <laughs> hey, Actually, that is one of the best roles ever Mercutio's written. Mercutio's an off, awesome, oh, awesome role. It's yeah. probably one of the best roles ever written, I think. Now, it's so cool. Playing role and you only get on, you know, you're on for like the first act, and then you're off. You're, you're off, off pretty, pretty much. much. You can go so hang out. Playing Romeo, was that daunting when you, when you took it on initially? It was, yeah. it was. My mum sort of, I, I've told this story a few times, but my, my mum likened it to me climbing Everest out the gate without ever climbing before without <laughs> oxygen. That's sort of, you know, similar to that in a sense. Because I, although I did <coughs> study at drama school with Patsy Rodenberg, who's this amazing voice coach, sure. um, I never actually really got to play a, a, a leading role in a Shakespeare play. Wow. Weren't you on your so, way, though, to the Royal Shakespearean Company when you got a call that. to do a film? I did have that opportunity presented to me by my agent when I was leaving drama school when I was 21, 20, mm -hmm. 21. And um, I was like, let's go. This, this is perfect, you know, which is, it's kind of the, the, the route that if you're lucky, you get when you leave drama school. But then I had this ridiculous opportunity in Lord of the Rings. And my agent had known sure. that it was on the cards because I'd already had a meeting for it. For but, it, so. So, it but in into, this. It turned into, the, yeah, a trilogy of. It has worked out movies. well for you, it know, I would say. It certainly has. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very yes. Lucky. You, Nobody's going to be I'm holding a, a telethon for you. <laughs> I'm a very lucky boy. <laughs> Why did you decide to go back to Broadway? Um, well, it's his back, debut. This yeah, is yeah, actually my Broadway. debut, but um, back to theatre. Yeah. Um, it's something that I, I feel like I picked up a thread in a way. Mm. I feel mm. like I needed it in order yeah. to. You know, to to kind of feel whole and complete again. You know, um, I. Um, There's nothing quite like a live audience either. Mm -hmm. No, there isn't. Making and, movies all these years. And I'll be a different actor by the time of this. Yes. By the end of this, uh -huh. I really will be. I mean, it's it's taught me so much. Just I've loved every moment of the rehearsal process, and you know, getting the chance to to really speak the poetry of William Shakespeare wow. in this day and age. And yeah. it's a reimagination of the story, because so it's, it's set in, in present day, but you're still, that, the, the Shakespearean language is still there. It's true. It's been very well edited, so it runs at about, just about two hours, which is really, you know, which I for, think is, for a Shakespeare mm -hmm. play, and yes. for this play, which would be three and a half hours. And so for today's audiences, too, audiences, they're not used to Nick, Nicholas Nickleby stuff anymore. It's, it's, it's fantastic, and, and it's very accessible. It really does, you know, I sort of, I, was, I grew up in Canterbury, which is a cathedral city, mm -hmm. yes. and I used to walk into the cathedral, and when I walk into the cathedral as a kid, it gives you this sort of sense yeah. of space and, yeah. and a kind of connection. Well, I can sort of liken that when we're having a good night in the theatre and reciting the poetry of Shakespeare, I hope that's something like what you get if you're, if you're sitting in the audience. You get a sense of the history of this language, oh. but it's been so well edited, and even if, you, even if you can't, even if it doesn't immediately tune in to your ear, you can go with the way that David Laveau, who is our five-time Tony-nominated you know, director, director yeah. he, he's, really, he's really done such a good way of making this accessible. And Condola Richard, who plays Julia, is just... Two-time Tony nominee herself. And yes. one of the most beautiful things you've ever oh, seen. I mean, she well, lights up the stage. Well, no Miranda Kerr. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> she is no Miranda Kerr. That's very true. <laughs> She's beautiful. Very true. I'm only kidding. We wish you good luck And he's got the cutest show. little baby oh, boy you've ever seen in your yeah. life. Little but but we I'm wish you great come. success. Yeah, great and it's, success. it's Look really at this kid. Yes, we're going to try. We truly are. Okay, from Mascara Smears. Oh, please.